Good morning, everyone. It is 10 o'clock. Um, I'll, I'll give maybe another minute just for those that are logging in at the last minute, and then we'll get the uh, we'll get this webinar started. Um, it will be recorded, and you will be able to access it in the future on the RTO9.ca website under past presentations. Okay, that was a quick minute, it's 10.01. <laughs> We're gonna go ahead and start. Um, so thank you. Uh, thank you for joining us this morning uh, for our webinar, Building Visitor Confidence with the Safe Travel Stamp. As we approach the holiday season, yay, and look to venture out to do a little in-person shopping maybe, uh, maybe still Amazon, uh, taking a movie, enjoy some of those activities we, look, uh, we took for granted rather before the pandemic. Everyone is doing so with great caution. Uh, before we pull open the door to enter, we're thinking, will I be safe? Can I trust that this business is doing all that they can to help mitigate potential risk for spreading the virus? Consumers and visitors alike are looking for third-party assurance with established protocols and standards that let them know that the establishment they are going to enter is taking extraordinary steps to ensure they're safe. This is where the safe travel stamp comes in. Facilitating this morning is Carol Greenwood with TAIO, the Tourism Industry Association of Ontario. Give us a wave, Carol. Carol is Vice President, Membership and Business Development. She has over 25 years of leadership and management experience in the hospitality sector. Carol has represented Accor Hotel Group. Did I pronounce that properly, Carol? Accor? Yep, absolutely. Could be, could be Accor, uh, Vintage Inns and Mississauga Tourism, in addition to her consulting firm. Joining Carol is Maxine Morel West. I guess by default it's you, Maxine, isn't it? Stakeholder Relations Manager with TAIO. Maxine has over 20 years experience in the tourism industry, working for a destination marketing organization responsible for the sales and marketing for the travel trade in North America. Uh, housekeeping, uh, again, this webinar will be recorded and made available on the RTO9.ca industry website. Attendees will be muted. There will be a Q&A at the end of the presentation, um, but if you have any questions at any time, please enter them into the chat box or the question box in your control panel at any time during the presentation. Ladies, good morning and thank you for joining us. I'll hand the screen over to you. Thanks so much, Lori. Um, as uh, Lori introduced myself, I am Carol Greenwood, the VP of Membership and Business Development, and my colleague Maxine is our Stakeholders Relations Manager. But really, Maxine is the lead uh, in the Safe Travel Stamp Program, and she has really taken this from its initial conception um, uh, and uh, application from the World Travel and Tourism Council to where it is today. So, um, but first, I'm going to give you a little bit of information about TIO. So, with that, fingers crossed. We're going to play this video. Can't hear anything, Carol. Carol, the sound is off. You losses due to lockdowns, stay-at-home orders, and business restrictions. 
Tourism businesses have faced the perfect storm of rising operation costs paired with consumer uncertainty. We know it has been an unimaginable year and know that we still have a long way to go. Tayo will continue to support you every step of the way. Because Tayo works for you. It works for every Ontarian who owns, runs, or works for a tourism business in our province. Listening to you with over 185 stakeholder calls, working with you to create member-driven and evidence-based policy recommendations. Supporting you. With member briefings, they get the breaking news to you first. Fighting for you. Promoting tourism in the national media and working to ensure that tourism receives recognition as the economic driver that it is. Trusted by industry with over 1,350 members and growing, we make your voice heard with politicians and policymakers. Throughout this crisis, Tayo has represented the tourism industry at over 500 meetings with government ministers, MPPs, and senior staff, ensuring our sector has a seat at the decision-making table. We've led the way in industry research, advocacy, and policy-making, and have won key victories for the tourism industry, including the Canada Emergency Wage Subsidy, Highly Affected Sectors Credit Availability Program, the Ontario Small Businesses Support Grant, the Canada Emergency Rent Subsidy, Northern Ontario Tax Relief, the Canada Emergency Business Account, the Northern Ontario Recovery Program, and the Ontario Travel Tax Credit that will fuel our recovery. But there is still so much more to do together, and we are not slowing down. We know that our industry is hurting, and Tile will keep fighting for you and with you innovators, the job creators, and the experience makers. All of you will not only rebuild our industry, but make it better. Join us as we continue being for because tourism creates jobs. Tourism drives the economy. Tourism is our future. So who is Tayo? So we um, advocate the importance of tourism as an economic driver and a job creator, as most of you know. Uh, we work for our members, we take on the policy issues, and you might have realized over the last 19 months, we've reached out to you, whether it's through a survey or individual conversations, or perhaps through your RTO, where they have shared your own personal stories and personal experiences so that we can actually take those exact examples when speaking to government to impact change. We put our members in front of the key ministers and the decision makers. And from that information, we provide detailed briefs for our tourism delegations, where we go to our tourism day at Queen's Park, or whether it's attending Roma, the Rural Ontario Municipal Association Conference, or AMO, the Association of Municipality Operators. And Bonnie Ruddick, who is the head of the RTO, is an active participant in those tourism delegations. So as you know, before COVID, and, and I, it might seem strange to talk about that when we're 19 months in, but the thing is, this is where we're, you know, we're benchmarking when we're speaking to the ministry and we're talking to them. Tourism in Ontario, we represented over 400,000 workers and 200,000 businesses, and we had a $36 billion GDP contribution. People don't always realize the true economic impact of tourism. It's much broader industry than what people realize. One in four of all new jobs were in the tourism sector, and we represented 3.8% of provincial tax revenues. When COVID hit, we experienced almost 70% in revenue loss. Two thirds of our businesses have experienced a revenue loss that was actually more than 90%. Almost half of our businesses can't now hire staff because they're not generating enough revenue. They want to be open. They want to be welcoming customers. They just don't have the staff in order to do that. Three out of our four businesses with debt anticipate it's going to take at minimum two years to resolve their debt and return to pre-COVID levels. And just over, well, just about a third of our businesses identified that these current labor shortages are a risk to them actually being able to be viable and stay open. So just because 
we're opening does not mean we've recovered. And so there is a lot more work for us to do. But one of the ways that we need to work on that is through rebuilding our consumer confidence. By rebuilding our consumer confidence and letting them know that it is safe to come to a tourism operation, we will support visitor spending, we will be able to create jobs, and we'll be able to protect the workforce that we do have. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Maxine for a couple of slides. Thank you, uh, Carol. So the WTTC or the World Travel and Tourism Council, as Carol has referred to before, um, their mission has been to maximize the inclusive and sustainable growth potential of the travel and tourism sector by partnering with governments, destinations, communities, and other stakeholders to drive economic development, create jobs, and reduce poverty. Uh, prior to uh, COVID-19, we had been working with the WTTC on issues surrounding the environment, on climate change and sustainability. But in the early weeks of the crisis, Tayo was invited to sit on the COVID-19, the WTTC's COVID-19 task force. Um, we were brought together to answer some of the questions that many of our own stakeholders had been asking us since the first cases in January of 2020. Um, even before the epidemic be became a pandemic, we witnessed the speed in which consumer confidence can be damaged by events across the world. Even before the first COVID-19 case in Canada was confirmed, a pattern of postponements and cancellations had already started to emerge. At Tile, we were inundated with um, calls and emails from our stakeholders asking us, you know, how do we deal with this COVID-19? What protocols should they be following? And how can they reassure their customers that they're taking the necessary steps to run a clean and safe business? If we learned one thing from this, and Carol will attest to this, that all sizes, all businesses needed support during this time, no matter the size of the business. Our relationship with the WTTC has continued to work towards practical steps to support in our industry. A large component of this relationship during the pandemic was the rollout of the safe travel staff. We are the first administrator of the Safe Travel Stamp in Canada. There are a couple of other organizations that are administrating it right now, uh, but we were the first ones to do so. So, sorry, next slide. So today we wanted to share the importance of the Safe Travel Stamp in the economic recovery of our industry. The WTTC in conjunction with the industry in Tayo has created the first ever global safety and hygiene stamp for the travel and tourism uh, industry designed specifically to address COVID-19 and similar outbreaks. This specially designed stamp will allow travelers to recognize governments and companies around the world which have adopted these globalized standard health and hygiene protocols so consumers can experience safe travels. It's received the backing of the United Nations Tourism Organization and has been embraced by more than 200 CEOs of major tourism groups. We are pleased to say that the Safe Travel Stamp program has been well received and successful since its launch. We launched this at uh, the end of August around Labor Day of last year. And over 275 destinations have already received the Safe Travel Stamp. Through Tayo alone and our efforts, we've awarded close to 2,000, actually probably over 2,000 stamps to local tourism businesses, not only in Ontario, but across the country as well. So who can qualify for this Safe Travel Stamp? So basically it's any tourism operator. So we've had hotels, restaurants, airlines, uh, uh, boat operators, tour operators, attractions, short-term rentals, several restaurants and retailers. Um, so we have across the gamut that have applied for the safe travel stamp and we encourage you to do so as well. So once you've determined you fall, your business falls into one of these categories, uh, as I mentioned, you would just go onto our website, www.tiaontario.ca. I'm just gonna put the link in the chat as well for you. If you look, go onto our website, there's an actual specific tab for the Safe Travel Stamp. And so you're gonna click on that tab and on there it will have more details about the Safe Travel Stamp and it will have a full deck um, giving you a guideline of how to apply for the stamp. And this is gonna be available in French and in English as well. Once you've clicked on the tab and you go to the application form, it's very simple, very straightforward to complete. It will take you maximum 10 minutes to complete the form. On there, we're gonna be asking for your first and last name or the main contact of your business. Um, if you're filling this out on behalf of someone, we ask that you, know, you please advise them that you're doing that. 
because we often send out communication about the safe travel stamp uh, throughout the, the coming months. On there as well, it's going to ask for their email address again so we can communicate them about any other upcoming promotions or any other uh, communications that we have. Then you're going to put the organization's name and on it, it always it asks whether you're a TIO member. So that's the most common question that we get asked. You know, do I need to be a member of TIO in order to be awarded the Safe Travel Staff? And the answer is no, you do not. But of course, there are benefits of being a member of TIO. Um, you get to talk to me, which is a, a benefit. <laughs> um, but in addition to that, uh, you get to work with um, and to be able to collaborate with like-minded tourism industry um, and other businesses. You'll also get to be invited to some of our TIO events as well. Um, and you'll get to learn firsthand of other government programs or grants that have been awarded as well. So uh, you'll get access to a lot of resources through TIO. And we are also offering complimentary membership to the Ontario tourism industry for 2021. So that's another way to try out our membership as well. So in addition to that, it's going to also ask you, you know, are, indicate whether you're an organization. So an organization, we mean whether you're an association or a council. You're also going to indicate if you may fall into it as your destination. So a destination marketing organization, or you represent a city or a township or a territory, you would indicate that on the, the form as well. Most of you will probably fall under the category of company. So whether you're a restaurant or uh, an inn, uh, you can indicate that you're a company. On here, we also ask for your website. And we recognize some smaller businesses may not have a, a website. But if you have a Facebook page, we also ask you to um, link to that as well. So you can provide that information. And then we ask for your full mailing address. And the reason why we do that is because within two to three weeks of getting uh, approved, we'll also be sending you a window decal, um, which you can then um, you know, put on your window or anywhere else in your establishment as well. I'm just gonna go to the next slide. So we've talked um, about some of these global standardized um, protocols. So I just wanted to take you through a couple of them. So one, the WTTC or the World Travel and Tourism Council, they've developed a number of guidelines uh, which you can find on their website. And so they've developed protocols for a general one on hospitality. They have one on short-term rentals, outdoors, adventure tourism, shopping. They even have one for airlines as well. So if you go onto their website, you can explore that to see if you closely align with a lot of the protocols that they actually have outlined in on their website as well. And these uh, protocols provide insights and toolkits for interaction and implementation to ensure that people are and feel safe. These protocols provide standards to ensure the safety of its workforce and travelers as the sector shifts, of course, to this new normal. I should also note that the protocols take into account the current World Health Organization, or the WHO, and the Center for Disease Control's guidelines. Um, these are living documents. So as we find out more information about COVID-19, these protocols are constantly being updated. Another protocol that we want to bring your attention to is Dine Safe, and this was developed by ORMA, the Ontario Restaurant, Hotel and Motel Association, along with industry leaders, and they've had legal advice and working with government agencies, and they've brought together these protocols or this catalog to, of best practices to help guide yourself, your safe and um, successful opening. Also, there's the Safe Stay program, which is again, another industry-wide uh, protocols. And that was developed through the Hotel Association of Canada. And again, it's about welcoming uh, your guests and also making your employees also feel safe, um, knowing that you're following these proper health and safety guidelines. Another program that we've been working really closely with is also the Post Promise, which is a national program. Uh, the Post Promise signifies a commitment to implement and practice the five key steps to workplace safety, um, helping to prevent the spread of COVID-19. Next slide, please. So there are a number of other protocols that are accepted as well as um, you can also indicate that you're following your local public health units protocols. And then a number of sectors um, have worked with us or with um, with the industry as well to develop their own protocols, which are also acceptable on the application. So for instance, uh, NOTO has developed some um, 
the OMCA, the Ontario Motor Coach Association, they've developed ones for um, tour operators and as well as the motor coach industry. Resorts of Ontario has developed their own. And we've had a lot of wineries as well and breweries also apply. And so they've also developed their own protocols as well. And those would be acceptable on the application form. So again, once you apply for this application, and again, it is available both in English and in French, um, the uh, you'll get a confirmation email once you've completed the application form. And so the email will let you know that we've received it and that we're processing it on our end. Once you've received that, we, our team will go in, double check, make sure everything is in order. If I have any um, additional questions, I'll reach out to you. Maybe there's something on the application that I needed more clarification on. And so we'll reach out to you for more information on that. Approvals typically take three to five business days most likely three business days, um, depending on what we have happening. We just finished our Ontario Tourism Summit. So it's usually around three to five business days. Once approved, you'll get an email from us stating that it's been approved. And then you'll get a link where you'll be able to download two versions of the stamp. One version you've seen throughout this presentation. Um, the other version of the stamp has a blank space where you can then add your own uh, logo next to the WTTC's and TIO's uh, logo. Um, this you can use again on your website and, and in your social media channels and any other communications um, that you may be sending out regarding this. Um, so again, um, the application takes three to five business days and it's a very easy process. And once that's done, we'll then again mail you one of our decals uh, that you can then display. So uh, last week we had our Ontario Tourism Summit uh, in Ottawa and it was a hybrid event. So we had people online and in person. And so we're so happy to be able to meet with the industry again in person. And during the Ontario Tourism Summit, we also do um, awards. Um, we have our industry awards, but then this year we also had we had our Ontario Tourism Resiliency Awards, but this year we introduced the Safe Travel Stamp Awards. And we were really excited that so many people were on board. And this was an opportunity for consumers to vote on their favorite or their, the, the one who's been um, actually offering the best safe and, and uh, safety protocols. So they had the opportunity to vote for their favorite Safe Travel Stamp approved business. And, um, and it was their way of saying that they felt safe when doing business with you. So all of our, um, all those that were approved had the opportunity to get their consumers to, to vote. And we're happy to say that each region um, was awarded a winner. And for RTO9, uh, we had three finalists. So the Upper Canada Village and Aquatarium and the Warehouse Restaurant and Inn. And so congratulations to the Warehouse Restaurant and Inn. Uh, they received the Safe Travel Stamp Award. So with uh, Tayo as well, outside of our partnerships, Tayo has also done its own work to try and rebuild consumer confidence so that people are feeling safe to travel within Ontario. We know it's going to be a while before international travel is going to rebound back to where we had 2019 numbers. Um, so we're trying to encourage people to you know, get out and explore your own backyard. I know I'm, I'm excited to do that. There's so much more I haven't seen in Ontario. Um, and so we want to encourage others to also get out and, and experience, you know, a new city, a new town that they've never seen before. And so with that, um, we've also developed or created our own videos. Um, we worked with a number of destinations across the province where people will be able to see um, what it's like to be able to get back out and explore the province as well. And then of course, with the added incentive of the 20% tax credit by the, that was announced by the Ontario government, which we hope will be rolling out early next year, this is another way we can encourage people to get back out and, and uh, explore the province of Ontario. So that's it for me. Thank you so much for your time. And Carol, I'm gonna turn it back to you. Thanks, Max. Um, and so, oops, let me just pull this back out. Um, we will, as Max has said, I mean, there's still, um, you know, having the consumer sentiment is important to us and um, ensuring that the safe protocols are in place also is a reassurance to our residents. 
so those videos that Maxine just referred to that um, we have created, those have been made available to not only the destination marketing organization um, as well as the regional tourism organization, and they're available to you. If you want to put them on your website, add your logo to them, you can. Um, they are an opportunity for you to continue to promote that your area is safe. Um, we continue to be your voice. We continue to have regular meetings um, with you as to really understand as things start to reopen what you're experiencing at this moment in time so that we can ensure that we are getting the appropriate support for you. So some of the things that we have done with our government relations is that we know that 58% relied on the SUS to cover part of their employee wages. We know that 77% of tourism businesses accessed government aid programs, otherwise they would have shut down. And so without additional government support, many business operations won't be able to survive by the end of 2021 and are at risk of closure. We know this, these are stark numbers, but we don't want, we want to ensure that the government doesn't forget us. And that's why you will continue to hear us say that reopening does not mean recovery. And so we will continue to make sure that tourism is front of mind. We are a vital industry in Ontario's recovery. We represent a hundred, you know, and because of that, that is why we've been able to, um, support and and get grants made available to us so there's been a hundred million dollars in the Ontario Tourism and Hospitality Small Business Support Grant that has been extended 500 million for the Tourism Relief Fund 100 million for the Tourism Recovery Program and 1.3 million for supporting resource-based tourism and we are continuing to push to have continued other support so um, I love this slide. It says you can't expect a re economic recovery without first supporting the tourism and hospitality industries. And you can't have a thriving tourism and hospitality industry without a consumer. So it is really important for them to feel safe. And this program of the Safe Travel Stamp is a completely complimentary application. There's no cost. Um, and it is, you know, it's, yes, it's recognized globally so that when international borders um, are, you know, that travel starts to come back, whether you're in New York or Milan or um, in Kingston or Prince Edward County, and you see this stamp, it's something that the consumer will recognize that this area is following the local public health protocols and keeping safe. And so that's why it's important that we, you know, as Maxine said, the site is always live and current to reflect the latest protocol. So you know that wherever you're traveling and they have the stamp, they are following the local um, current protocols. And so to provide that reassurance. And that also, if we have visitors coming into our area and um, they see that stamp that also provides confidence for the residents so that they know that their area people can come and enjoy and have that tourism experience they want and their communities are also staying safe so the fact that it's complimentary um, and the fact that it's uh, available in both French and English is a really great thing to have so we encourage you to do it we need our tourism industry to th survive so that our economy can Thank you for listening to us today. We are happy to take any questions. Uh, as I said, Maxine is the head of this program and she's done an amazing job. As she's mentioned, we have well over um, 2,000 um, approved organizations within Ontario and that will continue to grow. And it was our pleasure to recognize um, those individuals um, and organizations uh, that are practicing safe travel uh, and recognize them at the awards last week. So. Um, with that, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and open it up to any questions that you may have. Terrific. Thanks so much, ladies. Uh, if anybody does have any questions, um, please feel free to enter them in, uh, as I mentioned, the chat or question box in your control panel. Um, I actually have one, uh, and that is, can they get more than one SAMP if they have... If, uh, let's say it's a restaurant and they have two entrances. Sometimes there's a rear entrance to a patio area um, and one for the front. Um, yes, uh, we do offer one complimentary um, and then you can order additional decals if needed for more than one space or more than one location as well. Um, but yeah, they are available. 
Okay, terrific. And I think um, I had asked you, Maxine, how many we have in the RTO9 region. I think we're up to close to 115, I think. Yes, uh, in the RTO do another region. report for you, but yes, mm -hmm. I think we're close mm -hmm. to that. That's great. Uh, I know as a consumer uh, myself that I do look for something that tells me before I'm going into a business that some indication, um, whether it's something that they've written on a chalkboard sign, um, I, I know I would be more inclined to enter a business if I saw something that was um, third party certified that uh, that indicates to me that they're going above and beyond and that the uh, business owner has actually um, gone in search of something that can help them convey that message to consumers. So uh, if it's something that you are considering for your business, um, would encourage you to either reach out to either of these ladies to, to discuss it further or, or to go on to their website in general. And, and I'm just Laurie, if I, Laurie, if I can just say, I just uh, to all anybody that are watching is that the complete list um, if you want to know who else in your region actually has received the safe travel stamp accreditation they're actually listed on our website and that is updated weekly so it's always very current so you can see who's there uh, because we also do uh, you know promote and encourage that and um, it's just another opportunity for you to know who in your region is has the accreditation terrific going to turn my camera back on here. Uh, there is a question actually in the question box. So looking ahead to the return of educational tours, local, regional and national, does it look like this will become a requirement uh, of tour operators as well as school boards? Good question. If the safe travel stamp will be a, a requirement? Mm -hmm. I don't know if it will be a requirement. I mean, it's... Um... It's definitely, um, we encourage you to do it. I mean, there's going to be, you're going to obviously be following your own local health, um, pro, um, local, pro, cannot speak this morning, your public health protocols as well. And of course, there's going to be things that are in place, whether it's through the school boards and all that as well. Um, but we do encourage them to, I mean, it's another added um, way to show confidence uh, for people to uh, enter your establishment as well and again it is a global program so it's going to be something that it's across not just across canada but across the world as well yeah and i, I i'm just going to add to that that i think that i mean it is one of the programs that's very consistent and really complements any of the local programs because recognizing that it's recognizing local public health protocols that are current so it's um you know for those consumers that this matters to them and it's really important that provides you potentially the edge when marketing to them so um it's kind of uh, you know if you look at it in the same way that certain organizations really promote around being sustainable and environmentally friendly you know and there's certain consumers that that's important to them this is it's not that it's not important but some consumers as you said laurie you look for it so i think mm -hmm. that that would be beneficial to them and, and to Max's point, it is globally recognized. And I will say it's one of the few programs that is consistent globally. So that's that's a nice thing to have. Yeah, very nice. I see that um, my colleague Lindsay has dropped in a link uh, that will take you to businesses as of October 21st that have the safe travel stamp approval. Okay. So there's quite a few sheets there. That's great, really great to see. <laughs> wow. No, well, that's terrific. And in full forgiveness and transparency, last week was our summit. So I did say it was updated yeah. weekly. Maybe That's this funny. one might be every two weeks. But, <laughs> but I yeah. swear, I swear she called me out on that, October 21st. That's fabulous. <laughs> there are 35 pages of businesses listed and there. Wow. That's impressive. Um, I, you know, I think if, uh, if, if you're looking, to, certainly looking to differentiate yourself um, and more importantly, let people know uh, as I said, that you're that you're taking that extra step to ensure their safety. Um, looking for that green circle is something that would be um, very appealing, certainly to me as a consumer. And I'm sure I'm no different than most consumers out there. So I, I'm sure this is uh, a good thing to consider. And I appreciate you, ladies, coming on. I'm just going to check the 
and, and not only just for consumers as well, it's about also keeping your staff safe as well too, showing that you've gone those extra exactly. steps to keep them safe, which they'll then be uh, ambassadors for you as well. And Lindsay asks, is there, oh yes, is there a list that is organized by RTO? I think we, just the RTOs get that list? Yeah, they could just reach out to me and I'm happy to provide that. Okay. Um, so Jamie is asking again, I'm thinking more, this goes back to, I think his first question, I'm thinking more along the lines of internal policies of these organizations, something akin to proof of vaccination for organizations that aren't currently required by law to do so. Great question. So meaning, are they required to show that they have the safe travel stamp accreditation mm -hmm. in order to access? I think that's going to be maybe a criteria based on whether that, you know, if, if it's part of that tourism organization, but it's not, mm -hmm. it is not a mandate and it's not uh, federally or provincially mandated okay. at this point. At this point, okay. Um, just a very good thing to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I don't see, I don't know if that, that answered your question, Jamie. Um, okay, I don't think we have any other questions. Um, ladies, can you maybe drop your contact information into uh, the chat box, just so yeah. everyone has it, if they need to reach out to ask further questions. Sure, and also um, I just wanted to reiterate those videos, um, not that we shared them here, but I know you've seen them on the RTO site and as well um, in some of your local destination marketing organizations. Those videos of the consumer sentiment and resident sentiment are available to anybody that requests them um, that they can use in promotion of their product offering. So it's just uh, it's something that's showing that our, our province is prepared and getting there. Terrific. And Carol, for the um, the industry calls that are held, uh, is that something that if you're not a member, and I know this is a little off topic, but I just think there there's such uh, great information that comes out in those calls. Is that something that uh, non-members can attend, or is it just for members? Yeah, no, absolutely. Right. Now, I mean, at this point in time, yes. Um, one of the things that Tyo, we really took a position on when this whole thing started, um, was that we, you know, this wasn't just about Tyo members. This would have, was about the industry as a whole and providing the support that everybody needed. There was so much information coming at us, and still is. I mean, there's an announcement that's about to come out at 11 o'clock. So there's still information that's happening on such a regular basis that we always try to break it down so you can know specifically how it's impacting you as a tourism business or an independent business leader that happens to be in the tourism industry, however you identify yourself. So we wanted to break that down and have that accessible and available to you in one space. So yes, we did open it up wide to the industry and all they have to do in order to know when they're happening because they don't always happen at exactly the same time because that's if we know a big announcement's happening or if we know another like say for example if rto9 is having an event we don't want to cannibalize and take away from your audience so we will balance that with the industry so we send an email out every week at the end of the week as to when they are the following week and we welcome everybody to attend all they need to do is sign up to our newsletter or our postings it's complimentary once again no cost there and they will be able to uh, get that information and join us at any time you know as max said right now our membership is complimentary and so it's a you know there's much more access that you have to a lot of other things and we will continue uh, we recognize businesses right now in our industry they just don't have that additional income to pay for membership and so but we want to be able there to support them so we're trying to figure out what we need to do on our end to keep moving and we want to extend it to have that information to the industry as much as possible perfect one of the things i can tell you that i um i refer many new partners that we're dealing with um to the taya website is for uh, information on funding so yep. there's so much funding so many streams of funding that are available out there um, it's it's so easy just to go to your site and look for a funding opportunities page and it lists pretty much everything that's out there for the hospitality and tourism industry 
So if um, if that's something that interests you, another another great reason to visit the site. Uh, and Carol, as you said, um, and Maxine, that uh, membership for the rest of this year is free, correct? Correct. Yes, absolutely. And when we okay. say for the rest of this year, you could sign on on December 30th, and it goes for 365 days. We have a rolling membership, so that ah. is. Mm -hmm. But it's one year from the sign up date. Don't don't wait until December 30th. I mean, <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah, yeah. Take, it's coming close enough. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's terrific. That's really terrific. Um, okay, I don't see any other questions. Just give it a last quick run through. Laura, I just uh, wanted to also state that um, if you miss one of our stakeholder calls and you really want to be a part of it and something came up, as Carol mentioned, we have our newsletter. So in the newsletter, we always have the minutes from the stakeholder call that you may have missed that past Tuesday. So if you miss something, always check our newsletter. It's always the best resource as well. Okay. Yeah. And your stakeholder calls are when? How can they Tuesday. find out about them? They're on Tuesdays and we send out on Thursday or Friday morning um, the information about when they're happening the following week. Okay. So if they'd like to be on that email list, how would they, oh, they know about on um they if they just go to the tile website right down at the bottom it says you can um join our newsletter and we can maybe put that link in the chat box for you so you have that as well okay that's terrific it became so much more than safe travels but um but again <laughs> the safe the, this the uh i just I know the great work that you do and all the effort that uh that everyone at tile puts into making sure that we were heard um with with you know the powers that be and programs like this and there are so many of them really that help uh, the tourism industry and businesses and operators within the tourism industry um, if you have questions about any of that you can either reach out to one of these ladies or someone at tayo or of course you can reach out to anyone at rt09 and we can help as well so on that note, ladies, uh, final check for questions. No, we're good. Um, I appreciate you taking the time to uh, to join us this morning, and I look forward to working with you uh, with you both in the future. Thanks everyone for attending. Again, you'll be able to find a recording of today's session on rt09.ca under presentations. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. It's sunny, Thanks, so it's everybody. a good day. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Take care.